in the second video let us see how to execute the tests on Azure DevOps as well as locally. Uh, let us start with the Chrome first of all. Now what we are going to do is we are going to execute the Chrome tests in Docker instead of uh, using the local uh, binary. So here is the Docker image that you need to use selenium slash standalone dash chrome. There is another variation of uh, standalone chrome that is standalone chrome uh, dash debug. The main difference between these two images is that with the debug version of the container you can actually see what's happening uh, in the container like you can uh, view the execution happening in that container. With this standalone chrome you can't see the execution because uh, the VNC server is not running in that container. Now uh, this container is running on double for double for port in detached mode B stands for detached mode P stands for port we are exposing this port from the container and uh, SHM size this actually uh, flag indicates that we are going to use the memory of the host operating system. If you do not pass this parameter then CLA might crash in container that's why this parameter is important. So let us see how to execute this locally first. The container is already running you can see this command uh, was run just before and uh, the container is already running. Uh, this port I have given here, this is for the VNC server and you can see I am already connected to that VNC server using this uh, real VNC viewer. So real VNC is one company that provides these products uh, which allow you to view the execution uh, happening on the VNC server which is actually running on the Docker container. So the container is running now let us go to the test cases. Here is one test uh, launch chrome and what we are doing is we are connecting to the Selenium server and this we are remember that we are using this port because that is the port uh, that we have exposed in container. Now let us execute this test. As soon as the chrome is launched you can see that execution happening in this VLC viewer. And we are going to exactly uh, do the same steps uh, in Azure DevOps as well. As you can see that uh, chrome is launched in the container and then it is navigating to this website and then it will check or do the search. So that's how we can execute this test locally. Now we are going to do the same thing in Azure DevOps. So let me go here in Azure DevOps. There are two things basically you need to do. So there is build pipeline and there is a release pipeline. So you can see here there is a pipeline which is mentioned. So here you can create the new pipeline and then uh, select the repository then a goal. So you can see where is your code. There is the first question it is asking. You can select Azure repository git because that is where uh, I have already created the repository. So select that then select your repository then select the Maven. So automatically it detects uh, what project uh, is there in that repository and based upon that it will uh, present you some of the options or tasks that can be executed against that project or repository. So here you have to select Maven and then complete the process. I have already created this uh, particular build pipeline for our project. I will just show you what are the steps in that. If you click uh, on that build pipeline just click on edit and there you can see the YAML file. YAML file basically tells what tasks we need to run and uh, let us take a quick look at this YAML file. So trigger master what it indicates is that whenever something is pushed uh, some changes are pushed to the master branch this build pipeline will be automatically triggered. So compilation of the or building of that uh, repository will happen automatically. The next uh, important thing is pool VM image Ubuntu latest. So what it means is that we want to build this project on Ubuntu latest image or Ubuntu Linux operating system. Next thing is uh, steps. So there can be multiple tasks in that particular uh, pipeline. First task that we are doing is we are starting the container. So now uh, compile for compilation or building the project you don't need this step so you can ignore this step or task. We will need this in release pipeline because in the build pipeline all, all we are going to do is just compile the project. So next task very important task that is maven at 3. 3 means the version of that task and these are the inputs to this maven. Where is the form file then maven options, java home options, jdk version, architecture then uh, publish chain test results, test result file and goals compile. So here I, you can see I have given compile goal that means I just want to compile the project. So this build pipeline is going to create artifact which I am going to copy and that artifact name is drop and path to publish is this one build.sources directory. So that's how I have set up this build pipeline. Now to execute this build pipeline all you have to do is just 
run this. So click on the pipeline and then click on run pipeline. And then you can uh, select the branch. By default it is master but you can uh, definitely select other branches or tags or commits as well. And then click on run. Once that is run, that is how the logs will be created. Here you can see all the steps and the artifact as well. You can see here one artifact was published and uh, there you can see the logs by clicking on the job. So these are all the steps or the tasks that this job uh, build pipeline has done. You can see the logs as well. So far we have just compiled the project. Now what we want to do is we want to actually execute the tests. For that you have to create one release by clicking on create release button. I have already created one release Maven J unit. I'm going to show you exact steps that I have taken in that. So just click on edit. You can see this is the artifact section where you have to select the artifacts that will be ex uh, used by this release pipeline. So using these artifacts, we are going to do some processing on those artifacts. So let us see in this particular stage one, what tasks I have added. So stage one, you can compare it uh, or uh, you can think of stage as a environment, for example, dev environment, UAT environment like that. So you can create another stage for the UAT, another stage for staging or production like that. And if you go here, you can see this is the agent I'm selecting Ubuntu. I'm selecting Ubuntu specifically here because if I select Windows, my tests will not work because I need the Docker and to run the Docker images, I need Linux operating system. That's why this is very important, agent specification. The next task I have that uh, included is that I'm running the Docker. So the same command that I executed locally, it is here. All it is doing is just starting the uh, Docker container over there on the agent. And uh, finally, the main task, Maven task. So Maven POM file you have to select by clicking here and then remember that we had added the artifact. So you have to select this drop location and that's where the POM file will be picked up. Next thing is Google. So test Google we want to execute. That's why I'm going to test there and the options are this one because I want to just execute the Chrome test. That's why I've done this uh, syntax. So hash launch Chrome that means execute the launch Chrome method from this class at test class. Finally, it is another important thing. You have to publish the test results as well and that is the test result file. So when you are using a JUnit and Maven uh, Surefire plugin, the reports are created normally in this directory in XML format. That's why this syntax. And you can also additionally pass variables. I'm not going to explain you what, how you can use the variables right now because uh, that is out of scope for this particular video. But in the next upcoming videos, I will explain you how you can variables, how you can use this, uh, what is the difference between pipeline variables and variable groups, when to use that, what is the notation, lots of other options are there which I'm going to cover in next videos. So for now, these are the tasks and uh, to execute these tests, what we, we can do is, you can just uh, do the deployment thing. So just go here and then deploy. Or uh, if there is a change in the main uh, sources of the repository, you can create a new release. But right now, I don't want to create a new release. You, all you already just did deploy. So when you do deploy, all the tasks that I just showed you earlier will be executed. Then just click on deploy and then tests will start executing. And here you can see there is a deployment attempt number two. The first one was succeeded three days ago. And this is the second attempt that I'm doing now. So it is downloading the artifact. That is the first step that it will do. Next it is going to start that image. You can see it is uh, pulling that image. And the next uh, step. Remember that on the Azure agents, Docker is already installed. So all you can do is just execute Docker commands. You don't need to install the Docker as such. Because agents are equipped with uh, Docker already. Bash script succeeded that is uh, starting the container and the next thing that it is doing is it is executing the tests. It will download all the dependencies uh, for the Maven project. Remember that uh, Maven needs to pull all the dependencies required for the project. In our project there is a Selenium dependency and uh, there are transitive dependencies that is Selenium depends on other jar files or the libraries. So though all those jar files libraries will be downloaded. It takes some time initially but the, if there are subsequent uh, test phases that will be much faster. So that's how we can execute this Selenium tests. Meanwhile, the tests are executing. Let me go to the test uh, IntelliJ idea and then uh, let me cover next scenario. So launch mobile Chrome is similar to the uh, launch Chrome. Uh, the only difference is that we are launching Chrome in mobile emulation mode using this device. So uh, the website will be rendered as per mobile. So that is the only difference. Rest of the steps remain same. 
Then for Firefox, the uh, only difference is that uh, instead of Chrome, we are using Firefox options and we are using Firefox uh, image. So there is a separate image or a different image uh, for Firefox for the container. So that is the only difference. And remember that uh, we have to execute this uh, Firefox test on Linux agent only because the images that they have created are for only Linux operating system. You can't execute this test on Windows, especially on the container. So let us go back to the execution thing and you can see the execution is successful here. To uh, look what tests it has executed, you can click on tests link there and then it will display exactly what tests were executed. You can see one test was passed and uh, zero failed, zero others. And if you click here, you can click on pass and then it will display what tests were executed. If there is any error, that will be displayed in the error message and the stack trace as well. So that's how we can execute the Chrome test. Now coming back here, now to execute this uh, Internet Explorer on edge tests, remember that there are no images, uh, container images or the Docker images for those browsers and that's why we have to execute this test on the Windows agent in HOA. And also another important thing is that you have to also pass this or use this exe files. You can see these uh, files are there in the resources directory. So make sure that these files are there and you have to give the path, set these properties basically. The rest of the steps are the same, exactly the same. So here instead of Chrome uh, driver, you have to give the internal explorer driver and edge driver. So earlier we were using remote web driver, remember that, because of containers. But here you have to give the concrete classes instantiation. Now let us go back to the Azure and then see what uh, release pipeline is there for this i11 and H. So this is the plan and let us see what steps are there. There are two tasks. Look at the agent. It is Windows 2016 agent. And i11 tests. Here again you have to give the POM file, goal, you can give it like that, and generate test results. So this task will actually execute IE11 test, and next task it is going to execute age tests. So to execute that, all you have to do is just go back there, click here, and then redeploy. So the tests are failing on age, but uh, that is a valid reason because uh, the age driver is not compatible with the age on the Edge browser on the agent and that's why these tests are failing but i11 is passing we will get to know once this test are finished execution so meanwhile let's go to the IntelliJ and the last thing that I wanted to show you in this video is how to execute the Safari test now to execute the Safari test again there is no image docker image for a Safari so you will have to use Safari driver directly and uh, remember that you have to enable the automation on the Safari browser otherwise execution will not happen on Azure agents, that setting is already done in the browser, Safari browser. So you don't need to do that setting in the Azure. All you can do is just uh, execute this test and then on the Mac agents. And another important thing is that it, this test has to be executed on Mac agent because Safari is not available on Linux or Windows. So let us come back here. You can see the i11 tests are executing. So you can see here that i tests are passed, but each tests will fail. So let it run uh, all the uh, we, all we can do is uh, we can execute this uh, iPhone tests simultaneously or the, sorry Safari tests simultaneously. So let us go to Mac Safari plan that I already created or the release. And if you look at these uh, steps, you can will notice that I am using Mac agent. So you can see here the agent specification is Mac OS because Safari is available on Mac. And the rest of the tests or the steps remain same. So you can see here this test execution is failed. You can see age test has failed and the error message is displayed here saying that this version of message driver only supports message version 8.3 blah blah blah. That's why it is failing. And if you go to the release, make Safari. So for Safari and Firefox, one thing you need to remember I didn't tell you. You don't need to execute this quit method because uh, right now there is one bug that's why tests are failing so don't use, uh, use this driver.quit method in the end of the test you can see here I'm using driver.close for Firefox and Safari so that's all uh, that's all what I wanted to tell you in this video if you have more questions uh, related to this stack selenium stack let me know through the comments thanks for watching this video